Welcome to this video on the alveolar air equation. In the last video, we introduced the concept of partial pressure and the partial pressure of the inspired oxygen that we breathe in from the atmospheric air. So let's just quickly recap that. So we said that we know the atmospheric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. And the gases, when they're in a gas mixture, will exert a partial pressure based on their the composition of that gas and what percentage of that gas is made up by the gas that we're talking about. So the atmospheric partial pressure of oxygen is just going to be the total pressure multiplied by the fraction that oxygen makes up of that of that gas, which is 21 percent. Okay, so 760 times 21 percent is 160 millimeters of mercury. So of that 760 millimeters of mercury of pressure, oxygen is responsible for 160 millimeters of mercury of that. That is the situation in a dry gas, okay? However, we then talked about the fact that when we breathe in this atmospheric air into our lungs, it isn't dry. Our upper airway humidifies it, it warms it, and it moisturizes it so that it protects the, the airways and from the lungs from, from dryness, okay? So we need to factor in the pressure that those that that water vapor is going to exert in the gas. So that's what we've done here. And before I just said that we just subtract that and left you with it. But now we're going to actually subtract the number. So at 37 degrees Celsius body temperature and 100% relative humidity, um, water vapor exerts a pressure of 47 millimeters of mercury. So we have to subtract that from our barometric pressure before we multiply out by our fraction of inspired oxygen. Okay, so when we do that, we get 150 millimeters of mercury. So that's the partial pressure of oxygen in the gas mixture that we're breathing into the alveoli, warmed and humidified. Okay, so then we stopped there and said we'll pick up the, um, the alveolar air equation. Because what we're trying to do is figure out, the, is figure out this right here. We're trying to figure out the, what partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar space. And we said that it's about more than just this partial pressure of inspired oxygen, because we said that once we get into the alveoli, gas exchange takes place. Oxygen is taken into the um, pulmonary capillaries and CO2 is released. And that CO2 is gonna start exerting a pressure once it gets into the alveolar space. Okay, so when we move over to this intimidating looking um, equation, we should be able to just see that it's really not that intimidating. Because when we look at this first part, the barometric pressure minus the water pressure times by the fraction of inspired oxygen, well, we know that already, right? We know that that's just the PiO2. We've already talked about that. And then all this part over here is, is this is just us factoring in the alveolar carbon dioxide, right? That's this. We want to, We know that the carbon dioxide that's present in the alveoli is going to take up some of the partial pressure. So this is how we factor that in. We're going to take the arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and then we're going to use this value here called the respiratory quotient. This is the respiratory quotient. Respiratory uh, quotient sometimes called the respiratory exchange ratio. And all that is, is a reflection of the fact that oxygen consumption exceeds CO2 production under normal conditions. So CO2 produced divided by oxygen consumed. Okay, and under normal circumstances, this is about 200 over 250, and that's mils per minute. Okay, which leaves us with an R of 0 0.8. So what we're doing is we're going to take the arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide, divide it by 0 0.8, and that's going to allow us to factor in this carbon dioxide that's going to be present in the alveolus. Okay, so once we do that, actually let's just do that and then we'll get some numbers. So we know that under normal conditions, our PiO2, we said before, was 150 millimeters of mercury, right? But let's do the let's just do the working again, just so that it's consistent. So we have 760, and this is all millimeters of mercury minus 47 for the water vapor, times by 0.21. Okay, that's our PiO2, 
and then we're going to minus a normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. So we're just going to take 40 as the midpoint here, and then we're going to divide that by 0.8, right? So 40 divided by our respiratory exchange ratio, our respiratory quotient of 0 0.8, okay, which equals seven. We already said that our PiO2 is 150, right? And then 40 divided by 0.8, well, that's 50. Right, so our normal PaO2 is going to be 100 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so you can see here that we st we entered the alveolar space that we the gas that we breathed in the PO2 was 150 millimeters of mercury. But then once we accounted for the fact that there's going to be a CO2 hanging around in the alveolar now, we that brought it down to 100 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so. That's how you use the alveolar air equation, but now we need to know why it's useful. And we'll talk about that in the next video.